um, you will see specifically that Jeff's background is absolutely mirrored beautifully. In actual fact, in some cases, some of the um, organizations that he's co-founder of, and I'll let you talk, talk a little bit about it because in actual fact, Jeff, I think it would be good to put that up specifically with regards to the websites that you've got um, are absolutely, you know, the uh, tie in just beautifully with Shen. So uh, without further uh, ado, Jen, uh, uh, sorry, Jeff has basically been an entrepreneur um, and a technology expert uh, most of his life, but he's also, he's a lovely story that we, we talked about yesterday about when he, he, his spirituality goes right back to when he was about 15 years of age um, and even further, even 10 years of age, we asked the questions. Um, with that in mind, Jeff, rather than putting up and sharing my screen, um, I would like basically just if you would take us through uh, a little bit about ProSocial um, and a little bit about the two other um, uh, uh, organizations that you co-founded. And um, we will also uh, sh share the, um, the uh, websites with them. And I certainly encourage everybody on this call to take a look at those websites because they are you know, very much in keeping with what Shen is doing. So without further ado, Jeff, let me just um, uh, bring, ask you uh, to, to come on and just talk about, you're going to talk about a contemplative practice um, and specifically what is that and take us through that. Jeff, great. And I, thanks uh, Jeff. Thank you, thank, it's great to be here and uh, wow, what um, uh, a wonderfully articulate, both deep and wide presentation of you know, the spiritual journey and of unity and diversity um, on so many levels. Thank you so much for that. There's a lot to reflect on and digest there. Um, briefly, um, me, my name is Jeff Janung. I live in Austin, Texas with my family. And <clears throat> some of the work that I'm involved in that does parallel um, the Spiritual Heritage Education Network and Shiv's work uh, beautifully is contemplativelife.org. And contemplativelife.org is um, basically a, a hub that connects uh, people and communities with transformative practices, uh, contemplativelife.org. And I guess the, the centerpiece of uh, contemplative life uh, dot org are two things. One is this uh, practice hub where you can kind of go in here and uh, select practices or communities and uh, you know get some you know information on these different practices and communities. So there's a lot in there. You can have a lot of fun there. And then the other thing is uh, also um, a uh, a, a community finder uh, where uh, wherever you are um, in the world, uh, and I see there's people from a lot of different places uh, on this presentation today. So you can you know go in here and you know select uh, you know wherever it is that you're from and uh, type that in there, and then it'll populate centers of practice for you. So that's contemplativelife.org, a nonprofit organization that connects people and communities with transformative practices. Another um, organization I'm involved in is called Transformation 365, which is an experiential practice network. Um, and it's you know, you know, transformation365.org. And you can go here and there's lots of experiential practices about 20 minutes long. And it's just the practice itself. So there's kind of a treasury of practices there you might be interested in. We release one every couple of weeks and um, release it on Facebook Premiere, share it with everyone widely, archive it on Transformation 365, and invite people to go back it, to it um, you know, every, uh, every day for two weeks. You know, auspiciously, the, the last practice is peace breathing, amazing uh, breathing. And we had one for Shiv uh, uh, on breathing as well, his practice um, a, a few weeks ago as well. Um, the other thing I'm involved in is an organization called ProSocial. And ProSocial is something, uh, ProSocial World 
is the name of it. And it's something you're going to hear a lot about. Um, people all over the world are going to hear about this um, because it um, is an integration. It's based on the work of Nobel Prize winner Eleanor Ostrom, um, who won the Nobel Prize for discovering <clears throat> something called the core design principles of pro-social that help govern the flourishing of groups and communities anywhere in er any area that uh, people gather together, uh, pro-social world. And it's uh, both an integration of social science, evolutionary science, contextual behavioral science, and now part of what I'm helping to bring to it is contemplative science. So prosocial.world and uh, a new initiative of prosocial.world that is a collaboration between contemplativelife.org and prosocial.world is something that we're calling prosocial spirituality. And, um, and actually there's a training um, that we're integrating the core design principles of prosocial with the nine elements of universal spirituality by a great mystic uh, brother Wayne Teasdale. We're integrating these into a single training and we're actually doing a research initiative that is sponsored by the Templeton Religion Trust. Um, and so we're doing research on this and then we're gonna make this training available to the world. Essentially what this does, it's groundbreaking because it brings together the eight core design principles of pro-social, which is grounded in empirical science and is repeatable to help communities and groups flourish. So very complete on the horizontal dimension. And we're integrating that with these nine elements of universal spirituality that is essentially the essence of all the great traditions um, and which represents the, the vertical dimension of spiritual transformation. So um, I'll stop share there. And that's just a little bit about some of the things that, that I'm involved in. So <clears throat> this, thing of, this thing of breathing, um, so fundamental, uh, fundamental to life, uh, fundamental to transformation and practice, fundamental to the experience of unity, fundamental to health and wellness, you know, the Chinese proverb says that a life is measured in breaths. And I'm um, reminded uh, by the great poetry of uh, Maya Angelou, who said that life isn't measured in the breaths you take, but in the moments that take your breath away. That's contemplation, and both are true. And so what I thought uh, to do, rather than talking about contemplation and contemplative experience, I thought we could go on a journey together and uh, do a, a reflection exercise to actually experience it both on an individual level, but as this, this group, this community that's gathered here today. And so what I like to do is invite you into a practice um, and perhaps close your eyes because it is a visualization exercise. Um, but if you wish to have your eyes open, that's fine. Just a, a soft gaze because the attention will be turned inward. And then, you know, with that, just kind of settle in. And as you settle into the seat that you're sitting in, or if you're standing and your feet on the ground, then begin to anchor your attention to the breath, as Thich Nhat Hanh said. And as you begin to feel your breath and begin to align the various centers of your human experience with your breath, your thoughts anchored to your breath, your feelings anchored to your breath. Your sensory bodily experiences anchored to your breath. We'll just share a few breaths together in silence. 
while we anchor our mind and heart and body, our soul and our spirit to our breath in this now moment. Now with the soul of our body-mind aligned and anchored, let's go back together on our individual journeys. Come back to remember some of your earliest childhood memories. Something that stands out. It could be something wonderful. It could be something traumatic, but something that left a large impression and feel it, remember it. And as you feel it and remember it, also remember that each of us have also had this in our own unique way. And so in our mind's eye, we can connect and feel with that impression that each of us are experiencing. And remember from there some of your earliest childhood education experiences where knowledge and wisdom was imparted. What did that look like? What did that feel like? And as you take that in, now remember some of the spiritual experiences, the first moments where you were touched by the great mystery. A sense of this deeper connection with this mystery. And as we journey on, reflect back on your first experiences in spiritual community, if you had one. And spiritual community takes many forms. So we all had some kind of spiritual community. What did that look like? What were the impressions that were laid down the teachings, the rites, the rituals, the things that help form your spiritual being, the impressions of your spiritual experience. And as we do that, we also remember that we've all had that. We're experiencing our own individual impressions, but also our collective. We can kind of bring that into this experience right here, right now.
what kind of practices did you learn? Remember when you first found practice, a practice that resonated with you? What did that feel like? What did that look like? Perhaps a practice that became your daily practice for a time. Something that went beyond the mere knowledge of the practice but something that was woven into your daily routine, a practice that was deepened and experiential. Remember any community that may have been associated with that practice. How did the community help reinforce the experience and provide the motivation to continue to practice and to learn how to practice deeper. And as you continue on the journey, what other communities, what other practices along the way, what other teachings and teachers and traditions have you been fed by, nurtured by, enriched by? And then let's bring it up to this particular time. Where are you now? What do you practice now? What kind of community are you a part of now? How has your practice changed? How has it deepened? And if you don't have one, do you yearn for one? Do you yearn for a community? As we feel this, let's feel the changes that are taking place in our world at an increasing pace. feel into where we are collectively in the pandemic. How has that shifted our experience of self, of other, of community? How has this invisible and mysterious virus help awaken how vulnerable we are as human beings, the human family. How connected and how interconnected we are. How we recognize that we long for authenticity, for depth, for deep experience and meaning. We yearn for pauses. Well, let's, let's imagine how we're connected. We're all breathing common ground. We're all contemplative. We all have an inner life, common ground. We're all human beings. We're all alive. 
and conscious in different ways. We're all citizens of the earth. We're all part of the ecosystems of the earth. But how is the earth connected? The earth is connected to the solar system and the sister planets and the sun. in our system connected to the great Milky Way out on the spiral arm, the tip. In our Milky Way connected with the local group of galaxies. In the local group of galaxies connected in myriads of ways with myriads of other galaxies and on and on and on it goes. Turtles all the way down, turtles all the way up. As we begin to feel in that great connectedness, let's also envision Throw a forward pass into the future. A pass for our children and our children's children. For people and societies and communities that we'll be connected with, but we may never see or know. Imagine if these children and if these people were gifted with the insights of contemplative practice, of deep breathing, of the integration of the mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual energies and sensations of the human experience, imagine how that would change their perspective even out their traumas, heal. Imagine how it would change what we do, what we build, and how we build it. Imagine a world where evolution isn't just a long tail game that happens over eons of time but one that can begin to evolve in a flash, a flash of conscious evolution, where human beings recognizing the great story of humanity begins to live and act out of that reality. Imagine. And as we begin to feel into that and bring our attention back to this particular time and space, let's anchor what we experienced in this journey.
Thanks, Jeff. Don't know why I keep getting cut off here, but yeah. So, thank you uh, for that. It was great to go through that together. <clears throat> um, in with the, the remaining time, um, which is what ten minutes or so, is that about exactly. right? Yeah, and, and Jeff, I've I've uh, pulled away from going around to everybody, and I've sent specifically by the um, the chat line uh, Shiv's um, email. So please, questions that you've got, or comments, or suggestions, and even questions for Jeff. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll filter them to Shiv and Shiv can get them out and give you a response. Um, remember what the purpose of this was, is to get comments on Shiv's proposal as we move forward in the next two days. So Jeff, thank you. Um, I, I've also basically put your, all the websites that you had, as well as your bio that, that I have prepared on specifically on the chat line. So you can pull it off of that guys, if you want, but very much encourage you to look at Jeff's um, uh, websites and maybe Jeff, just a little bit, if you wouldn't mind talking about those different websites, why are they different? And you're also a trustee of the uh, pro-social a little bit more about that, if you wouldn't mind. Um, well, I, I kind of did at the beginning um, and rather than, since we have only 10 minutes left, rather than do that because mm -hmm. they're yeah. linked in there, what, I, what I'd rather do is ask Shiv some questions okay, uh, sure. to that proposal to stay true to the aim of our time together here. Perfect. Um, yeah, okay. You got um, it. Go, go ahead, Jeff. So, so Shiv, a, a number of things come to mind. We're not going to have time to even begin to get into so many of the questions that I have, but one of the things I'd love to get your reflection and perspective on is it, one of the things that I'm seeing in my work and one of the things that we're all seeing globally is there's an awakening to the importance of conscious breathing. Um, I don't think it's coincidental that COVID-19 uh, is a respiratory virus. It's telling us something about something, right? Um, the George Floyd, I can't breathe. Yep. This is part of the collective conscience of humanity that's shouting out, um, saying, wake up, breathe, you know, pay attention. And, and your work is clearly part of that. So I'd love to get your, your thoughts on kind of the spiritual dimension of what's happening, what we're seeing arise collectively. I don't think about that one. You, you, you ask difficult questions. Um, the, there's a positive way of thinking and there's a negative way of thinking and there's a realistic way of thinking. I don't know what to, how you approach it. Um, there was this um, video that uh, you showed in the very beginning as to what the current situation is. And how do we get from the current situation to the uh, to the connections and connectivity and the consciousness and uh, breathing? Um, uh, in in my opinion, if I if I had um, the wherewithal, uh, I would create a create a um, uh, a culture of deep breathing. That's where I would start to uh, to accelerate our path from where we are to where we are going. Most of us, uh, I would say 90% of the world, maybe even more, uh, live unconsciously, reactively, uh, and they have they don't know the importance of making the unconscious conscious. And I guess. That is the crux of the problem. And if we can create that culture of deep breathing, uh, 
you will uh, help humanity um, in living with harmony with each other, uh, living healthy, living happy, uh, mental issues will disappear, mental disorders will should disappear or prevent it. Um, and we'll start um, looking after our environment uh, because we have we have this responsibility, the uh, dominion over the earth. That dominion doesn't mean we exploit the earth, we exploit nature. Dominion means we look after everything. And uh, that is what God does. And if we are created in his image, uh, then it is our responsibility to do it. And uh, I I think realistically, although we are on the upward movement, but we are fairly at the bottom of it. Yeah, got to start somewhere. Yes. As they say it's always darkest before the dawn. Um, and I think that um, those that are doing kind of this international work, um, the type of work you're doing, the type of work I'm doing, I think we're seeing more of it. We get to see glimpses of kind of what's happening over the hill, you know, maybe more than some other folks, because, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of darkness. Um, but, you know, as, as they say in the yugas, I mean, um, the Kali Yuga is the dark period uh, before the Sata Yuga, and it's the sun starts to rise again. Uh, but the sun rises nonetheless. Um, you know, the other thing that I'm witnessing is that Part of what has happened, and there's lots of reasons for it, there's lots of scientific reasons, and I'm sure lots of metaphysical reasons, why humanity has lost its way, um, forgotten the essence of who we are and what we are and why we are. Um, but it's because we've kind of come so far, there is a, a sense that maybe we are close to the bottom and there's something that's beginning to rise. And part of what both needs to rise and I can see is rising is the development, the um, um, incubation, the awakening of a new human story, a big human story, a collective human story. And it's, it's not something that any one individual or group or organization is going to say, well, here it is. Um, it's definitely not going to be that. It's what's happening is it's something that's kind of uh, upwelling. Um, and we're kind of all, many people are kind of getting it simultaneously in a sense that there'll come a point in which it's like that grain of sand that tips the scales. Um, that will then usher in all different kinds of new forces and energies. And the new story uh, seems absolutely connected to um, the work that you're proposing, which has to do with unity and diversity, unity consciousness, to be specific. Um, because when we see our interconnection, and we see the unity that we have with each other and with all creation and with the whole cosmos, it really changes what we do and how we do it. So say a few things about thoughts regarding unity consciousness. And then we'll wrap it up, Shiv. Go ahead. Uh, Jeff, uh, what I think is the reason why we are at the place we are. Uh, we lost the culture of exploration. And we are living in times where belief is prime. And uh, belief can be anything. 
we are so certain of the truth that we know what it is. And when we know everything, we do not develop. And we have to create the culture of exploring. And we have all the tools of exploration right in our body. This device that is talking to you, name is Shiv Tarwar, has got all the tools that you need to explore. But we do not explore because we think we know everything. And it is our certainty that has that we know all that is to be known that we are that brought us to this position that we are at and uh, as fred fred's uh, um, presentation last week on doubt being the way love is the movement doubt is the way and if we are not certain of what we believe and believing is necessary only because we are doubtful, but we are not aware of the doubt. So we don't explore. And we don't explore, we don't develop. And whatever thinking that I'm capable of, that is the crux of it, I think. It's beautiful, Chef. Shiv, thank you, thank you, thank you. And for everybody, for both, for both Jeff and, and, and Shiv, thank you so much. Um, next week, we will endeavor to uh, dead stop at 12 so that you have an opportunity to ask questions. But I have sent by the chat line, uh, Shiv's, uh, you've already probably got, well, you, I don't think you, well, if you don't have Shiv's email, it's on there. Ask those questions, and he'll also direct them to Jeff. Put in the chat line. Um, uh, chat. I'll have all the chat file uh, saved, and Perfect. you can save the chat file too. If okay. you go to chat, and there are three dots on the bottom of the the chat window, uh, 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 there are three dots there. You click the three dots, and there it saves chat. So when the meeting is ending, you can save a copy of the chat yourself. Perfect. And Perfect. then you'll have all the questions that everybody's asking. And we make sure that next time we have enough uh, opportunity for people to, to, to ask. It was them. wonderful, Shiv. Don't, 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 listen, ideas. God moves in mysterious ways and that's the way he's moving today. Um, and by the way, Jeff, you're going to give me a Zoom call. I try to be funky with my Zoom without, uh, and I mess myself up. But anyhow, that said and done, Shiv, do you want to talk about a little bit about next week? Um, yeah, what we're going to be focusing on, on the next level? On the next level, what we are uh, focusing on is the, uh, what I call holistic science. What is the science? scientific basis of holism. Um, the truth is holistic, all-inclusive. That is what holism means. Science that applies to uh, the whole human being that can take us from our particular and reductionist narratives to a holistic narrative that can take us from loving ourselves and loving our family and loving our herd to loving our neighbor, irrespective of who the neighbor is. So we could be looking at wow. the convergence of uh, spiritual science from various scriptures, metaphysics, and um, science, uh, natural science, social sciences, and life sciences. Uh, if you uh, reflect on uh, the topic that I was doing today, I was actually using anything and everything. I was using a scripture. I, I had a metaphysical uh, diagram there. I had uh, psychology, that's social science. We're talking biology. Uh, we're talking evolution. We're talking everything under the sky. What is that 
holistic science. What are the basis of it and where can it take us? Thank you, Shiv. We're at, we're just about, we're just about ended, but again, um, huge thanks. Uh, Jeff and, and Shiv, maybe we can circle back next week uh, before the, the next presentation. Jeff, you're going to join us next week? Uh, not it? sure. Uh, I will try to. Okay. Jolly good. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Anyway, listen, God bless every single one of you. Have a wonderful uh, weekend, and we will see you next week, um, 10 o'clock Eastern time, uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Anyway, God love you. Bless. <laughs>